Hello, this is Sean Butcher from Novartis. The purpose of this video is to present a scenario where SAS provides unexpected results by automatically retaining variables and to provide a few simple solutions to this problem. The issue seems to arise when multiple datasets are being set together and a variable that doesn't exist in all of the datasets is being populated in records that come from a dataset that doesn't have the variable in originally. So if we look here, um, I'll make sure that the work library is cleared. And if we look here, we have two datasets, one containing uh, data from a local um, source that has a patient study day and a data type showing it's local and here we have another data set from a data set from a central source which has patient visit and a data type showing that it's central data so if we run these to see what data type or what the data sets look like after we've run them And as you see, central we have patient, three patients with visits 10 to 18 and the data type of central. And in the local data, we have three patients with study day ranging between 100 and 324 and the data type of local. Um, it just so happens that all these study days are exactly the same the square of the visit that we're after so if we s we might want to set these two data together and then create the visit in the um, data from the local locally collected uh, by using taking the square root of study day so if we do that we get some unexpected results whereby the visit is created as 10 in the initial for the initial observation then it's retained down for all of the for all of the results rather than being 10 11 12 13 and so on and the reason we've done this is maybe because we didn't want to overwrite the visit from the central data if if we didn't have this if visit equals missing then we would just have um, the visit populated in for the local observations and not for the central observations and we probably have some note in our log that we're not too keen on um, a possible solution for that uh, a simple solution would be to create a variable, um, a separate variable. So, for example, we might create this as visit one, um, and for the data from the central, we set visit one equal to visit. Close our previous run. And rerun this. See the result. Then visit one is populated as expected. So that's one possible solution we can use. Um, again, using the same data set from previously. Uh, with the local and central data um, it's not just a problem when using functions as you see there we've used the functions to try and create study, uh, visit sorry um, and it's not just a problem with that if we, even if we explicitly state uh, that study day 100 is visit 10 we still get the same issue 
So if we were to run this data step, uh, no problem with the log again. Um, if we look at the data, again we still get the same visit equals 10 for all of the local data. Another possible solution for that might be to create the or initialize the uh, variable visit in the local data set before we actually pass it into the data set where we're setting the two data sets together. So if we create, for example, underscore local, set in local and set visit to missing then if we set in underscore local instead of local we should have more look There we go. We've got visit 10, visit 11, and then visit 999 for the other observations. Another scenario might be where we want to have data coming from multiple studies that are collected in slightly different ways. Again, similar to what we've just seen. Uh, but it provides us an opportunity to look at a different solution. So I've cleared all our work data. And uh, if we see we've got adverse events collected in two ways. In study one, we've got the action taken uh, in three separate variables. Um, Action 1 might be hospitalisation, action 2 might be um, study drug temporarily discontinued, and action 3 might be um, no action taken. So you see the first patient we've got an adverse event of no bleed with a preferred term, second patient has no adverse event, and the third patient as an adverse event uh, with action one and three populated um, and then if for example in study two uh, we have the, essentially the same patient um, but this time the action taken have all been concatenated together so for example one and two all in one variable second patient again has no adverse event and then the third patient again has action of one and three so if we just run these to create the data step so we have again three observations in each We've got seven variables in one and five in the other because of the different ways that the actions have been collected. So there you see patient one has this adverse event with actions one and two. Patient two has no adverse event, so no action taken. And patient three has this adverse event with actions one and three taken. And then in the same style for study two, the patients have all got the same adverse events, um, but the action have been collected in one variable instead. So if we were to set these two together and then try and standardize the way the action data is stored 
we might do something like this where we just say if the action from study 2 has a value or contains a value of 1 then we create action 1 if the action contains a 2 then we populate action 2 and so on so if we run that then look at the data that we receive we again have the same problem with the patient with no adverse event actually having action in the resulting data set so a solution for this one that we could suggest would be to pop to uh, create the action one two and three outside the data set where they're being set together so so we create underscore study two And if we move the code into this data step instead, then run these, hopefully we've got a better result. There we go. So the patient with no adverse event, as expected, they haven't got the action 1 and action 2 populated. So there we have three possible solutions. We've got the um, creating a separate variable uh, so we can do all the processing in one data step. Uh, we can initialize the variable in a single, in a separate data step and we can do the processing outside of the data step altogether. So hopefully uh, these th three solutions will help you if you f find you have problems where SAS is automatically retaining data that you didn't expect to be um, retained and populated.